Hi everybody, in this short video I wanted to give you an overview of Twitter lists. Uh, so my name's uh, Jason Burrows, you can follow me on Twitter at Jason Creation. Uh, I um, am lucky enough to talk to a lot of people about um, digital marketing and social media marketing and one of the questions that I get asked is about how people can be more effective using Twitter. Um, so this is just a quick top tip um, uh, Twitter 101 on Twitter lists because um, for those of you that are pretty active on Twitter and you're out there and you're following people um, what you'll see is that um, your home page becomes um, a lot of noise um, you know in order to grow your following on Twitter you need to go and engage with people um, you know and the clues in the title right social media so if you've got to be social you can't expect to be following a hundred people and have a hundred thousand followers that you know unless you're Justin Bieber that's not going to work so you have to go out and find people that are having the same conversations as you that have got the same interesting topics that are you know engaged in the same circles. so you can go and start to uh, uh, make Twitter friends uh, and grow your following and therefore grow your engagement so the challenge of doing that is what you'll see is that you'll start to be following quite a lot of people now you know I'm following 28,800 people now do I every single day want to read every single tweet that they post possibly not I mean it's you know if you sit and watch my timeline refresh every time I open in it says you've got 20 new tweets you've got 100 new tweets you've got 200 new tweets so therefore it becomes quite noisy and Twitter lists are designed um, to help us organize the people that we want to follow or the people that we want to keep a track on so Twitter lists so um, the best way to start your Twitter list um, and to instigate the creation of a Twitter list is actually through the Twitter web browser. Now, once you've created your lists in the web browser, you can then add people to your list from your iOS app, your Android app, uh, or for external applications like Hootsuite and TweetDeck and stuff like that. But it is easier, I find, to start uh, to create your list and to organize them from within your Twitter uh, profile. So you just go straight to your profile and go to lists. What you'll see here then is it will tell you two things, um, a, a list that you're subscribed to and a list that you're a member of. So actually on your journey in social media, people might add you to a list. So you can actually see, oh, these are people that have added me to their lists. So these are people that are looking after me. That's quite nice to see. So, um, but what we're really talking about today is how you can use lists. So creating a list is really easy. All you have to do is think about the way you want to segment the um, people that you're going to engage with on Twitter. So you might want to think about potential customers, you might want to think about existing customers, you might want to organize staff, you might want to organize competitors, you might want to pick people based on a topic, you know, so here you can see I've got uh, some people from the Cloud World Forum here, I've got people here that are uh, fellow, what I would call, you know, marketo superstars, so people that talk about marketing automation, people that attended Social Media Week uh, this week, people that attended workshops that we've ran, um, and you'll see as you go down, you know, I've created lists for different purposes. One of my favorite lists is this list here that I call people to listen to. So this is where I'm adding people that uh, on a daily basis, you know, this is the one feed that I want to go to, you know, to see, you know, what's going on in the world of digital marketing. And you'll see here there are some great people like Kim Gass, Jeff Bullers, you know, uh, Martin Jones and Handley. And you can either look at the feed or you can go straight to the members and see who's a member of this. Now, I wanted to show you this because this is a, this is a, a very important point. So yes, you see at the top here, you know, this guy called Jack, I'm following him, you know, he's a real top guy for social selling, so, you know, if you're interested in social selling, I would suggest following him, he's Jack Kozakowski one on Twitter, um, but what you'll see down the right hand side here is that I'm not actually following everybody. Now, this is quite important from a list perspective, because you might want to add people to a list, so you can keep a track of what they're doing, but you don't actively want to follow them. You don't want to knock on their door and say, hey, I'm following you. You just want to be able to see what's going on. So, so you could create a list for competitors or people like that where you can add people to that list to monitor without actually having to go and engage and follow them on Twitter, which is quite useful, right? So let's go back to my lists. So creating lists is really simple and you've only got one of two questions to answer. And that is, do you want to create a public list or do you want to create a private list? Now, this is really important because if you create a private list by ticking the bottom box, then uh, only you will be able to access that list from your Twitter credentials when you log in as you. Now, there is a way around sharing this list. And what I mean by that is, if you use um, an enterprise application for managing your Twitter account within a team, 
like Hootsuite or Octopost or something like that, then that will share your credentials with member of that group. So if you are in a, a work group and you've been cur curating lists on partners or uh, people that you want to engage with and you want to share that, you can share it if it's private as long as your credentials are shared within that application. If not, only you can see it. And maybe that's what you want. Public means actually anybody can find that list. So two things about public. The first thing is you get a little list URL that you can share with people and say, hey, follow my list so other people can subscribe to that. This is great for curating influencers where you want to share with a team. These are people that really influence me. The other thing about creating a public list is that when you add somebody to the list, they get a notification. Now, this is really important to consider. Um, somebody I know uh, in one of my clients uh, created a list called People I've Unfollowed on Twitter and then made it public by mistake and started adding people. So, of course, what happened was all of these people they started to unfollow on Twitter started getting a notification saying that this person has now unfollowed you on Twitter. So that didn't go down very well. And the reason why they did it was because they realized that their home stream was really busy and what they wanted to do was keep a track on these people. So, you know, they were actually doing it in the right kind of way, but had got quite a lot of uh, negative outcomes because it notified everybody that unfollowed them. Now... Top tip for you here is actually you could use that to your advantage. So if you want to get engagement with somebody, um, you know, let's say, um, uh, well, a, a real person example. So Guy Kawasaki. So um, um, I wanted to, uh, I you know, I've, I've never got Guy Kawasaki to favorite a tweet or like something or, you know, even if I've mentioned him. So my strategy was to create a list uh, which I called people that really inspire me, and I added him to that list. So, of course, in the combination of me telling him that he inspires me on Twitter and then going for some engagement meant that I got engagement on my social media posts. You know, and that guy's got three million followers on Twitter, so he's a great guy to go and engage with. So you can use the notification to your benefit if you want to. So, first thing we do is we create a list, and we call it what we want, and you'll see by the side, if it's locked, it's private. If there's no lock, then it's uh, it's open. Um, you know, so top marketing people, um, uh, social media heroes, all of these are completely open. And you can see actually a number of these were curated by other people. And these are lists that I'm following. So I've created my list. Now, adding people to the list is an incredibly simple. So as you go on your journey in social media, adding people to lists is really simple. So let's say we are looking for a topic. So we're just looking for people who are talking about social media, for example. Or let's say we're looking for people that are talking about um you know, back to the future or whatever's happening. So, so um, I can now see, okay, I've got my, my list that I've created and I can see Tim Fargo here. So I want to add Tim to my list. So if I just click on Tim, on Tim's cog, I can now say add or remove to lists and I can literally just tick which I want, which list I want um, uh, Tim to be part of. So let's say I want, actually I do, should add Tim to this list really. So um, I put Tim to my list, now he's there. Um, so this also works really well on your um, uh, iOS app and your Android app where you can just click on the person, click on the cog and you can add them to a list. Now in the app, remember that only works if you've already created your list. So another top tip could be to create a list for people that you want to put into a list but you haven't actually created a list for that yet. So you could go into Twitter and say, okay, create a new list which is a future lists list. And then when you see somebody think, oh, actually, I really did want to follow, you know, photographers. Or I really want to follow people that share great content or something like that. But you don't have a list for that. Then have this kind of bucket list that you can add people to. Now, once you've created lists and you've organized your people into those lists, you've got a number of ways to view them. As I showed you earlier, you can come straight into the app. You can go to lists. Um, sorry, you can come straight into your profile. You can go to lists. And then you can click on them and see, okay, what's happening in the world of, you know, what's happening in the world of my, my top guys at Creation Agency, for example. So I can go and see, you know, what we're tweeting and, you know, whether that's getting engagement. So we can view the list through the web browser. The other thing that you can do is you can use a friendly application. Um, so a really good one is uh, Octopost or Hootsuite or even or TweetDeck. Sorry, there's another great one that we use. So, um, so here what you can do is you can create streams. Um, and this is... What I'm showing you here is very consistent with most of um, um, those types of uh, Twitter account management. So once we have um, a stream, what we then do is we just select our credential, which where we've saved the list. So here we changed it. So uh, this was on mine. Uh, and then I just go lists. And now I can literally just create streams based on those lists. So I can say, okay, I want to have Creation Nation in there. I want to have 
um, my next list to be the Marketo Superstars, let's add those in there, and then I want my next list to be, um, let's come down and put here, uh, oh, future friends, that's a good one, they're people that I want to engage with in the future, um, there we go, people I listen to. So now you can see really, really neatly, on my screen I've got those three curated lists that I can sit and engage and follow. And they're only updating based on the people that I've put them in there. So all of a sudden we've cut through the noise on Twitter and we're actually just showing the people that we want to go and engage with. So for me, lists are a real lifesaver to organize it when you're getting busy and you're following lots of people and you just want to jump in and see a little piece of content. So I did want to leave you with one final tip for lists, which is, of course, um, please feel free to add me to your one for great content. So that was at Jason Creation. But another great tip I've got for you is at some point there might be an event happening or there might be something happening or some movement happening on Twitter that's related to a hashtag. Um, so let's say, you know, you want to find people that are talking about Star Wars because you want to engage with fans of Star Wars. Now, what you can do is you can do what I did earlier, which was this manual search and go and find people. But what you might also do is think about this in a clever way. So let me give you a good example. So the Cloud World Forum. So there's a Cloud World Forum event this year. Uh, and part of my uh, job is I work with big IT companies. So I like to keep an eye on what's going on at uh, cloud type events. So in the Cloud World Forum event, there were lots of people there and there were lots of people tweeting. In fact, if you have a look, there were 755 people uh, that were at this event. But I didn't curate those manually. What I did was I used an amazing free piece of software, uh, which I'm going to show you now, called If This Then That. There's an iOS app for this, which is just called If, or the website is ifttt.com. So if, then, if This Then That is a Ruby on Rails uh, program that allows you to uh, create what they call recipes to make things happen. Um, so what I've done is put a little recipe in place, and I can show you my recipe here that says, if somebody tweets, then do something with Twitter. And this is called hashtag cloud world forum tweeters. So if I just show you this script. So that's what my recipe is called. And I'm saying add it to my list. So essentially what if this and that does, it searches Twitter for people that use the hashtag cloud world forum. Then it takes their Twitter name and it adds it into my list cloud world forum gang. So if we go back into Twitter, you'll see that my Twitter list is called Cloud World Forum Gang. So if this, then that is dynamically collecting people to the list that I want to um, uh, I want to go and engage with. So if there's an event happening or a topic or uh, something that you really want to be curating people around, now you can only allow um, five thousand users on a list. So this isn't about curating a huge thing, but you can then use that list in multiple ways. So think about this like database segmentation. So if you're using then um, um, uh, a Twitter management tool, so one of my favorites called Social Bro, so you can use that to do follow and follow programs, you can do that to do um, uh, directed tweets against members of a list. So hopefully now you can start to see how lists can go from a very personal tool to actually a really big powerful marketing tool to help you segment your users and help you segment your database. So thanks for your time guys, hopefully that was a great overview uh, for you or a useful overview for you on Twitter lists. Um, I really you know, encourage people with their journey on Twitter to start to set up lists and to start to segment people they meet in their journey into lists because it makes your life a lot easier down the line. Uh, so good luck and don't forget to follow me on Twitter, I was at Jason Creation. Thank you.